My name is Ike Lomo Williams Sijewa. The name of my company is Kiki Sweets. Kiki Sweets is a business born out of hobby. I love to cook and I love to bake. So anytime I have guests over, a family friend, I always want to bake for them. So I think it started a day a family friend came, I baked for her. I just she told me that you know your cake is so nice you could actually go into it as a business. So that's how we started the journey of baking, went for trainings, and at the same time, Google was my teacher. You know, I learned to bake and over time perfected my recipe and procedures and all. I've had experience, I've had issues where by, by the time I finish baking, the cake is maybe the taste is not the texture I wanted. I just have to start over again. But one thing I was sure, one thing I always allowed to be my point, my, my, what keeps me going. I know where, I know the taste I want. So until I achieve that, I won't stop. I would keep trying. Even if I decorate a cake and I see that, ah, this cake doesn't look the way I want it or there's a mistake somewhere, I don't patch it up. I start all over again until I've achieved whatever design I have in mind, whatever it is I want. Uh, currently, we're looking at individuals between the ages of 17 and 60, corporate organizations, then staffs of corporate organizations as well, and also schools, churches. Basically, everybody is a target market because everyone celebrates their birthday. People eat, so we just but well, we focus more on the middle class today, upper class segment. Our prices, uh, why we have a, a target peg at the middle to the upper class? Because there are times, cake, for instance, is a luxury. It's not something you can always have or you need. So there are times people do their birthdays without cake. So we need to be more focused on those that have the money that has the wants, the need, that has the need, wants it, and has the cash to pay for it. First, for a particular bank, I manage their head office, their head office contains whereby I prepare the lunch from here and take it to them. I take it to them, the staffs come to eat, and there's, there are other bodies that when they have trainings, they order for meals whereby I take it there and go serve, and also individuals, the party, 60 years old, we had to do the cake, we had to catch up with the food. You know, Kiki Sweet is like an only, almost, almost an all a one-stop shop, whereby we're still working on it, whereby we'll have to, for your bridal, your bridal dress, your cake, and the catering. You know, when it, to a bride, those are the three major things they are particular about, and Kiki Sweet is out we are on our well okay we've gotten the cake we've gotten the food we're working on the garments aspect of it as well presently my staff strength is at 10 is at 10 they are at different locations right now serving lunch uh, when the time like i have my baker here now is working so if we have orders, there are times we have more orders, we have to bring in more contract staff. Whereby they just they have they've been trained already, so they just they are on contract. When we need them, we'll call them and we'll pay for the service they bring them. In five years, uh, we're looking at having our own eatery whereby you can come in and dine. And we have a cake store right by each other. So you come in, even if you don't want to buy cake, but at least you go through the cake store to go and eat, the smell, you see it. So I'm sure by the time you go, you visit our store two or three times, the image would register in your mind, in your subconscious. Even when the need arises, you know that, oh, there's a place we go to, they have nice cakes and all that. Ten years plan to be the first, I'm not sure if we already have one, but we're looking at being the first functional driving cafe in Lagos whereby you know most people when they're going to work they don't have the time to wait for breakfast 
So on their way, they can just drive through, pick up whatever they want to eat, and head on to work. Thereby, they're having their breakfast and lunch. We do deliveries. You just call us. We we'll deliver to your office. Take out that lunch hour stress off you. Presently, we we are we are supplying uh, different branches, different banks on the island, and we have to in a Kedja access. So we're looking at spreading our branches more, at least catering for more companies around within the Ikeja, VI, Ikui, Maryland access. Then over time then we'll look we're looking at moving to the outskirts, open states, Ibado. I think that when it comes to designs, your inspiration can come from anything. And so there was a day, there's this fabric I saw, and like, okay, I want to make a cake that has the patterns of the fabric. That's what I want to give the cake. So anything, your environment, the atmosphere, the times, even your occupation. I want to make a cake for a media person. I would know that, oh yes, this cake needs to have camera, needs to have light, it needs to have, so it's, we work on the situation, if it's a doctor, the cake will have stethoscope, will have prescriptions, syringe, and all that, and if you're, maybe you're making a cake with a baker, you know that's what happens when you feel, mixer. <laughs> So different things inspire us when it comes to baking, when it comes to designing. So inspiration can come from anywhere. I've had really nice cakes, so I always try to improve my recipe so that it can be better than what I've had. First, I have to get my recipe has to match. Okay, the quality of that, like the quality of my cake, needs to match that which I've tasted. Then after that, I need to surpass it. So you need to keep growing every day, every day. You need to keep practicing. You need to keep updating your recipe, and you need to keep coming up with new recipes: banana cake, carrot cake, ginger cake, caramel cake come up with unique flavors that's how you stand out i think as a baker uh, we, ha we we i think we all have that ability to work under pressure when everything just seems to go wrong all of a sudden something that instinct kicks in and you're able to solve whatever problem it is well my best moment is has always been the wow effect my job has on my clients when they see it and they're like oh my god wow this is so nice i like this you know when we get positive feedbacks from our clients aside the cash that uh, is being paid what is more fulfilling are those positive feedbacks and that's what really keeps us going that's what keeps us going that's what makes us want to do better want to do more i can, I can tell you i'm not feeling fine i'm ill i can't do anything and they tell me, okay, yeah, I want to cook, cook this one. Now. Before you know it, I find myself doing it already. At times, I'll just go and visit a friend, and I'll be like, ha, I want to eat this one today, and I'm not doing anything. I'm not going to do anything. I'll just sit down. But subconsciously, I find myself, I'm already cutting one thing. I'm doing something. Before you know it, I'm taking over the cooking. So I love to cook, and I enjoy baking. Cooking. I teach women how to cook, how they can make business out of it. I it I can I know cooking, baking is something I can do freely without I can do willingly without cash and being involved. Like I said, before I even started the business, I was baking for my guests, I was baking for anybody. Ah, do you want cake? Let me do the cake now, let me bake for you. I'm gladly doing it. So it's something I have a passion for it, so it's something I would rent and break myself over to do without cash, with or without cash benefit. Ah, it's not very easy. Well, like I say, if you have a supporting husband that helps you, like there was this instance 
Okay, that was in December. We had large orders of cakes. I had gone to be a journal the cakes we are going to make deliveries and others kept coming in and it got so bad that my husband had to say okay where is your recipe book let me just do what i can do and he followed the recipe you just you know when you have someone that supports your business nothing at least there'll be times you'll be working at night you have to walk through the night someone has to take care of the kids so, and you need a you need a, an understanding husband that would be able to do that, help take care of the kids and all. So with that, you're able to balance the the economy has not been supporting the business, but we're working well strategically working on how we can at least we can like they say ride on the storm. So right now we're having strategic meetings and plans for 2018 to ride on the economic storms that is going on right now. Hopefully we're going to come up better. Like the way the prices of imported goods went up, the dollar hike, because most of the things for baking are imported, so whenever there's a dollar hike, it affects the price of raw materials in the market. And also, uh, the fuel scarcity because of the light the light is so bad we need generator to run the business and there are times for you to even get more it's just hard and just little things like that by the time they come together the effect the end effect you see it affects the it affects your output the government can start by stabilizing the power supply whereby there is constant light because if there is constant light then we won't really depend on generator whereby we have to be looking for fuel once that is sorted but a lot of companies a lot major companies depend on this power supply to run their business to run their operations so once that is stable then uh, the, the, the restabilizing the market the dollar price so that at least we have access or we, have, we can assess our raw materials here and if this part probably if part supply is okay we can even have our raw materials locally sourced because the production of chocolate is a light intensive is a, it's something that really depends on light so if the light is stable, we can have companies that companies that make chocolates here, and that way we'll be getting it easier. First thing first, they should think of adding value. Think of what value can they add to themselves that would earn them that cash. So go for trainings, vocational studies. It's back then that when the parents are saying, "I ah, know my daughter must not go and learn tailoring. My daughter must not go." And but right now, that is what is bringing the cash in. My family friend, a younger one, in school, she learns to sew. And while she's in school, if she's on holiday, she's sewing, she's doing things. And today, she didn't even, she's not even looking for a job. She's a designer on her own. She makes good, good money from that. So I think what they should do is try to add value to themselves see what they can do what is that there is nothing every, everything has a, a handle whereby it can bring in cash so far you add value if it's oh i like to talk i like to do this go an intern in a radio station whereby you the value of what you have will be appreciated or okay you like to cook learn it learn how to learn learn how to cater how to cook start start small but when you're starting, you shouldn't, what you're driving for shouldn't be the cash. Because the time will come when that cash is not coming in. But it's the passion that keeps you going.